Hi guys, Richard Murray here. If you can go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel, that'd be epic. Here is the information on what you should do in your off season as a triathlete or as an athlete in general. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Cheers guys. Seeing that off season is well just around the corner for me uh, and Rachel as well, um, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of uh, advice into how to take off season, how to approach off season, and perhaps what you know what I've done the last couple of years in the off season, whether that's helped me uh, during the year, and uh, yeah, what uh, what the off season is actually all about. Um, I think those are kind of some important things uh, as an athlete, uh, any athlete, to just know when is your when your when your season will take place. Uh, then when will you take your break for the season? Uh, these are really really important things and and kind of something that I learned over the years as time has gone on. Um, and yeah, so I, I, what I'll do is I'm pretty much going to head back to where it all starts a little bit for me and where I started training, where I started to take my off season, and how I went about that. Um, and uh, the one big thing is uh, whether you're a Northern Hemisphere athlete or you're a Southern Hemisphere athlete, uh, this kind of is a little bit different for each hemisphere, which one you happen to be in. Um, I grew up in the South Hemisphere, well, just in the, in South Africa side. Um, and so obviously the summers are different. So uh, they're complete opposites, Europe to South Africa. And uh, yeah, you kind of, it's difficult because, well, in South Africa, the, the seasons are different. So we have our main triathlon season kind of running from uh, October side all the way through to like, say, about February, March, April side, somewhere there. And then the kind of a European summer season kind of starts on May side and ends kind of October side. Uh, and so that's one big thing I had to factor in as the years went on as to when I should take my off season and how I can go about uh, using my off season to the best of its ability to try and make sure that I'm fresh enough for when the races come in Europe uh, and in other parts of the world, so say for the World Triathlon Series races, uh, Super League races, uh, all these other types of races, so that I can uh, peak for those certain races that I need to peak for. Um, and yeah, so I'll go back to obviously where I started. So I started racing in South Africa, um, and then the, we had the South African champs, uh, we had those events uh, kind of at the, at the start of the season through March, March, April type of side. Um, so there's sometimes in Mauritius, sometimes in South Africa, in different parts of South Africa. And yeah, so I started racing. I would kind of uh, start getting fit type of thing around over Christmas, kind of January, February, and then the big races will be starting. Uh, and yeah, this kind of worked for the first few years uh, when I was a junior growing up in South Africa. Um, and during the off season, well, actually, back then, I had no off-season, to tell the real truth. There was no difference between me being in-season being out-of-season. I was just an athlete. I was racing kind of every weekend. Uh, during the winters, well, I'd be racing mountain biking. So, kind of mountain biking season. The triathlon season finishes. Obviously, it becomes winter in South Africa. Then I'd be racing mountain biking season. And the mountain biking season would also go on for a couple of months. And then right after that, I'd head straight back into triathlon season. So, there was no real break. Uh, and there was no real planning behind uh, what I was doing or why I was doing it in any certain order um, until I was probably about, I would say, 18, 20 years old uh, when I started to get coached by Lindsay Perry from uh, the High Performance Center in Johannesburg. Uh, and I kind of started to read some books. So I read a whole bunch of books as well uh, from the Joel Friel, the, tri the Triathlete Training Bible, um, as well as I went to, <coughs> I went to college. Uh, at ETA in, in Stellenbosch in South Africa and I learned uh, a lot about uh, periodization and into how you should structure your training year uh, and also how you, when you should structure what races, how you should peak for certain races uh, as well as when you should take your off season or when you should start to see signs of fatigue in your body not being able to respond to the training sessions that you're actually giving yourself. Um, so those are some really important things to take into consideration uh, when you're planning your year and when obviously you're planning your off-season as well. Um, and so yeah, so obviously as I said, 
I started as a junior racing like a headless chicken, kind of every weekend, we kind of what was on this weekend, I used to go and race that uh, and kind of prepare in the week for that weekend. It wasn't very professional and that's kind of the way, I wouldn't say the way it, sh it should be to a degree, but it was kind of nice just to not be so serious and not be so structured and not be having these massive goals when I was a kid. Um, just having fun, going out there, doing some fun racing, uh, getting fit, learning new things, doing a whole bunch of different sports. So I was doing for anything from mountain biking, from cross country mountain biking, downhill mountain biking, duathlon, triathlon, uh, cross country running, track running. I played cricket, um, I played field hockey, uh, I played tennis as well when I was growing up, I played some golf. Uh, so I played a whole bunch of a lot of different sports. I did motocross. Um, as well because my father comes from the uh, motorsports world so I grew up doing motocross and some enduros as well uh, which really did help me in my technical skills for triathlon racing uh, and yeah so that's kind of how my background started as a triathlete and then as I said uh, when I was about 18 20 years old uh, I started to be in contact with Lindsay Perry from uh, the High Performance Center which is the kind of like the, the triathlon training group up in Johannesburg um, and I headed there and I started to kind of start to structure things a bit more um, and yeah I definitely found out that having your off season is really really important and the off seasons kind of um, they're kind of opposite a little bit when it comes to South Africa and Europe um, so I was racing kind of all year in all year out the whole time not having any plan really and I started to realize that I needed to take a moment in the year where I take off for a few weeks and let my body recover from all the racing, all the traveling, all of the hard work. Uh, otherwise, my body would just burn out and I'd be wondering why I'm not actually racing well and why is my body not responding anymore to, to the training that I'm giving it. Uh, and that's one big thing to realize that you need a structure in. When you're taking a break, you're not going to race in that break because then it's not a break. So in your off season, don't do any racing, don't be silly, um, you know, don't get roped in by your mates or your friends, like, come on now, uh, come on, race and do some racing, you know, if you want to be serious about what you're doing and you want to improve with what you're doing, you need to take it seriously, that's, that's life, and uh, yeah, it's like with anything, if you don't take anything seriously, don't expect outcomes to just randomly come by themselves, uh, you know, top athletes or people improving, uh, they train day in, day out, they recover properly, they eat properly, uh, and yeah, they make sure that they do everything the best that they can. So when it comes race day, they are ready to race. Um, and yeah, so uh, as I said, um, I was growing up South Africa. I realized at one moment that I had to actually stop racing the South African circuit. Uh, and so a lot, of, a lot of age group athletes, a lot of guys ask, why am I not racing in South Africa? The answer to this question is, is because I earn my finance and I earn all my money from racing in Europe when South Africa actually has winter. Um, and so I kind of left South Africa, I haven't been in South Africa for winter in the last 10 years because I'm always in Europe um, from kind of March to October side and that's when all the big races happening and that's where I can earn my biggest income in triathlon which for me is really important. Um, so I had to start taking my off season um, uh, over the South African summer period, um, so kind of November towards December side and I would take off about three to four weeks um, of, you know, from training. Um, and yeah, that would kind of let my body recover. I would go out, I would smash burgers, I would drink beer, I would go out and party until crazy hours of the morning, um, kind of like binge partying for like a week. And that's kind of how I started to do it. There was no structure on what I should do in my off season, more as to just do whatever the hell I want, don't train, pick up weight. And that I did that for the first couple of years and until I met Rachel Climo and things changed right after that. Um, I started to do a little bit more training during my off season just to make sure that I didn't pick up so much weight. So I'd pick up about seven to eight kilograms in, in that region off season just from not training, eating rubbish food, partying, just kind of letting loose being a wild South African. And um, that kind of when I started to train again, I had a lot of little problems. So I had like problems with my lower legs running my shoulders, I was overweight and so yeah, uh, there are a lot of things that I needed to learn and the one big thing was to still do some exercise in my off season, um, only when I felt like it. Um, so, you know, not going out to train because I have to, but just going to do some exercise because I know it's good for me. And I think there's a good balance <laughs> where you can look into health and just make sure that you're healthy 
uh, and doing a run every second or third day, going for a cycle once or twice a week and maybe doing one or two swims in the week just to make sure that you actually keep intact of actually being a triathlete. Um, and yeah, so I think those things of just keeping some activity and keeping some exercise in your off season definitely will help you a lot when it comes to uh, training again and starting to train for the next season. Um, so you won't pick us up as much weight as well. Um, your digestive system, your stomach, everything will still work well because you're still training. Um, and I think that doing some exercise, luckily Rachel told me, come on, you have to do some runs and you have to keep a little bit of active uh, in the off season. And yeah, so I think that definitely helped me to learn to make sure that I do a little bit of exercise in the off season to keep things um, fresh and obviously to keep me excited. I mean, I train, you know, three times a day, uh, kind of like seven days a week almost, and to go from that to nothing is actually really not good for you. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely think it's important to keep a bit of exercise in there to make sure you have kind of three weeks, almost four weeks, depending on how long your season is, kind of off, do what you feel like, don't pressurize yourself to do any hard sessions. Uh, don't bring your heart rate up super high too often in the off season and just let your body recover from all the racing, all the traveling, all the stress that you put on it during the season. Um, saying this, uh, I've decided to do a 10 kilometer. This is the first time I've ever done this, but I decided I wanted to do a 10 kilometer running race kind of as my season finished. And this sounds a bit weird. Why would I finish my season and do a 10K running race? Well, I've got quite a bit of fitness. 2020 has been very weird. Uh, so setting some goals for myself to kind of do running races. So I did a 3K running race on the road, I did a 5K running race on the road, and now I feel like doing a 10K running race on the road with some crazy goals. I'm not sure whether I'll make them, but I think this year, 2020, is just kind of good to set some goals to make sure that I stay motivated, stay a bit focused, and kind of right after I've done that 10K running, 10K running uh, PR attempt that I'm going to do, I'll go straight into having an off-season. We'll probably head back to South Africa for the off-season, so we're in Europe now. And yeah, head back to South Africa, take a couple weeks, uh, really low downtime, and then start preparing for the Tokyo uh, Olympics uh, next year. And yeah, so I think that's kind of the way that we'd like to structure it, and it's quite good to make sure that uh, which hemisphere you're from, whether you're from the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, you take into account when the races are in your country, where the races are overseas, structure your whole year out in your racing calendar. I mean, 2020 racing calendar, you can burn that thing because it doesn't really matter what you did this year. There wasn't much racing going on. Um, and so just make sure you know when the races are, when you take your break, how long your break's going to be for. Make sure you have a good time, have some good fun, do what you enjoy doing, and then you'll have a great off season and be ready for the season when it comes up. Um, I'm also going to put some stuff from Rachel as well. So Rachel's experiences on um, how she does off season, what she finds important in her off season as well. So you can get uh, an opinion as well from a female uh, athlete, professional athlete. So kind of, I've had my say a little bit on uh, kind of on the off season and when you should take a break from training after racing. And yeah, kind of be nice to have some information from you, Rach, uh, kind of on when you think it's good to take a break and yeah, what you do in your off season when you're not training and racing? Well, I think there's three options, well, three reasons why you should have a break. Maybe more, but at least three from which I think they are important. One is if you're mentally not ready to race anymore, two, if you're physically not ready to race anymore, and three, if it's just, if there's no races anymore. So, um, yeah, no, there's, there, there's, some athletes who are taking long breaks, some are taking short breaks. Um, I think this year we will have a bit of a longer break. Last year we took uh, quite a short break because we really wanted to work on our swim before the Olympics. Um, yeah, that was uh, so we ended up waking up early a lot in our holiday. Um, but yeah, it was worth it because we that was just literally the only thing we were kind of doing. And the rest of the day we just take it very easy. Um, and I think it's very important to listen to what you want to do and like what your body feel, tells you to do. Some people just don't do anything for a while. Um, personally, I th it changes a lot. Uh, the first couple of days I don't do anything and then after a couple of days I feel like I, I just want to go out, go out for a run, um, which is currently also the case. I have not touched my bike yet. Uh, I have done one swim just to loosen up the body. 
because I start to notice that if I don't exercise, everything is actually getting sore. And normally you would expect it the other way around, like when you're an athlete and you train over 20 hours. And um, it's crazy that my body is not used to not doing anything. So yeah, for me, it's very important to actually keep exercising a little bit, uh, even though if it's just like going outside for a walk or a run. Uh, running is just the thing I enjoy doing the most because it's just simple. You put your running shoes on. Even if the weather is shit, you get back and you go for a shower and you feel refreshed. Um, so I think there's no one good thing uh, or one thing you have to do in off-season. I think it's just completely personal something. Um, if I look at when Richard and I just met, he would just take off-season um not do anything and get fat. <laughs> I think that's the past. Uh, no, but you've been a little bit more active in your off season now. Um, just doing something like every day or it doesn't have to be every day, but um, just moving a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's more or less what I do and what I would advise people to just really listen to your body. And if you, after a week, you feel like you really want to get back into training, sure. Um, that's not who I am. I just want to have a little bit of a longer break. And in my break, I enjoy doing other things like cleaning up the house and uh, meeting up with friends and just things I don't always have time for. Just like doing random stuff. So if someone asks me at the end of the day, like, what did you do? And I'm like, well, I did a lot, but I can't really exactly tell you what I did um, because I've did so many little things. Um, so on holiday, I tend to wake up quite early because I'm actually excited for something which is yeah different than usual cool and what uh do you have any like any advice to kind of just the average uh athlete out there that kind of you know uh well from 2020 side obviously there's been no racing and stuff uh so motivation has been quite tough for most people this year in in general um and so yeah i think the the one good thing would be like kind of to give some advice maybe uh on athletes that are maybe like uh you know just doing some some training uh and trying to stay but focus it's coming into winter as well in europe uh and yeah, just to, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously not everyone's a professional athlete. So uh, yeah, how to stay a little bit motivated and maybe, uh, yeah, how you can stay, have some type of goals and a bit goal oriented coming over the winter season, perhaps. Yeah, 220 was an interesting season for everyone, um, athletes, non-athletes. Um, as an athlete, you kind of work toward, like, I would like to work towards something and then you've got a race and you train for it and then that race doesn't happen. So you get a bit disappointed. And after a while, I think you just get mentally a bit tired of like not knowing what to do, not knowing what you're preparing for. Normally we work in really blocks and we have a couple of races we want to peak at. And now there's just like this, I have to train type of fight, but I don't know what for. Like, so after a while, we just kind of call it a season and just said, okay, we're training for next year. We're training to get fit. So that doesn't mean massive workouts. It's just trying to stay fit. That's more or less how we did it this year and looking into off season i mean i'm hopefully going to south africa we're trying to work that out now um but if i wouldn't um so i would stay here in winter i would definitely take out my mountain bikes in a normal year i would do some cross races maybe even local even if it's not a big race but just to have fun get out there and definitely ride my mountain bike because it's much more fun in the mud um, and even in the rain than being on the road. I think most winter months I'll sk skip riding my road bike or if it's really shit, I'll just uh, ride on Zwift on my indoor trainer. And um, yeah, swimming is always good if you have a squad around. Although I would definitely not uh, join too many squads now. <laughs> so still it's a different season, but um, go outside whenever you feel like and whenever you can and make it fun and it's important to have a lot of fun um, and not take it too serious because the, the next race next year will still be far away cool thanks for that information and your first cameo appearance here on camera for uh yeah the youtube <laughs> world out there and hope uh, you guys enjoy uh some information from rachel Klammer from a female's perspective side as well as from my side and yeah anything else to add I don't think so. If people have any questions, just let us know and um, we'll try to answer them. And hope this, you guys can take a little bit of this information, maybe implement it uh, further down the line in your off season. And yeah, hope that helps you guys to recover a bit and be ready more for the following season. Uh, and if you can guys can go ahead uh, and like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm mean, sorry, like this video and subscribe to my channel. That would be amazing. And you guys can get some more great content in the coming weeks. Uh, from my off season as well as heading back to South Africa it should be 
a pretty good time. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.